Kingdom Business Fellowship is about empowering Christians to establish kingdom businesses to fund the end time harvest to advance the kingdom of God through business. And we believe that your business is your ministry, that your business is your calling, and there's an anointing for you to prosper. There's an anointing for you to build businesses, but not just businesses for the sake of just making money, but it's a kingdom business for advancing the kingdom of God. So not only obviously releasing funds to fund the end time harvest, to fund God's work and kingdom, but also to do marketplace ministry, marketplace discipleship. <coughs> Excuse me. I think I just sw swallowed an invisible fly or something. <coughs> but so that's the vision for Kingdom Business Fellowship. What we do is it is a fellowship. We get together once a month here, usually the third thir uh, Tuesday of the month. That's exactly what this is, third Tuesday of the month. And we always have a time of networking. We call it networking and snacks. Did you get to do some networking, meet some people today? Wonderful, awesome. Normally, we would kind of try to take some time to find out what everybody's doing and your name, but there's too many people here. If you do that, it's going to be forever. Even though I tell people, just tell, tell us your name and, you know, your business, they'll go for five minutes. I'm sorry. So, I, you know, so we'll just, uh, we'll keep it very simple tonight because we do want to give as much time as possible to our guest speaker. So... KBF is something we really believe in, and, um, and this is actually something um, we used to do when I was, you know, and of course, it, it really, you know, I know they do KBF and many of the river churches. It's a part of our culture. It's a part of our culture because we are all about revival. We're all about empowerment. We're all about the anointing, but not just only anointing for ministry, but anointing, obviously, also for business because business is your ministry, and, uh, you know, According to statistics, maybe 2 to 3% of people that will be some, somehow in ministry or operating in ministry part-time or full-time will be in some kind of a pulpit speaking ministry. Well, what about the rest of us? You know, you're not chopped liver. You do have a calling. God's going to use you, and your platform is the marketplace. And that's what we, we are here to encourage you. We're here to challenge you. And many, many amazing things have happened through Kingdom Business Fellowship here. People have got stirred up. They got vision to establish businesses and we've you know they've been able to get the heart of God for that and not only that we're also here to keep you on the straight and narrow path amen so that you don't get sidetracked because I have also seen this is now my 24th year of pastoring and I've seen a lot of people that would come to church broke and God will start to bless them and they start to rise up and do you know prosper and then you don't see them anymore you know we definitely I, we don't want to see that happen. We want you to be focused. We want you to keep your eyes on Jesus and remember your calling that you are running the heavenly race, not the rat race. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So uh, we're excited again uh, to have Miguel Delgado with us. He's going to share with us. And he was telling me about some changes. Maybe he'll tell us about what God's doing through his company because he's expanding and doing some other amazing things. And he's got a great word for you. And he's going to pray for people. Um, before I do invite him, uh, if you haven't done so, please do text River KBF. It's all one word, no quotation marks, just River KBF. It could be small or capital letters to 94,000. Okay, if you would like to be on our uh, texting list or emailing list, just go ahead and I, I'm seeing already some people are doing that. Just text River KBF to 94,000, but you will get a link when you do that. You still have to click on that link and give us your first last name and your email otherwise all we have is a phone number so uh, make sure that you do, do give us your first and last name and your email in the little form that comes up when you click on the link so we'll capture all that information you'll go into our kbf uh kingdom business fellowship texting and emailing list and we'll let you know about our upcoming events uh, one of the things we do is we do a business expo and uh, all the different businesses have an opportunity to present their businesses and that was powerful how many of you were part of our business expo wasn't that awesome? All right, so we'll, do, we'll have one again. And <coughs> we are going to do more things like business breakfasts and luncheons. We've talked about it. There's just a lot to do. But at least we're here tonight to receive an impartation. So without further ado, let's welcome Miguel Delgado. Welcome to be that you're with us again. You're just going to jump right up. Praise God. Great to have you here. We love you. Thank you. Praise God. Praise Take God. Take your liberty. Praise God. And Come on, everybody. Come on, Get come stirred on, up. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Pastor. My goodness, this, is, this feels already feels electrified up here. Uh, Pastor Brinks, I don't know, he's, 
He, he has this thing burning always. <laughs> How many of you can feel the Holy Ghost already? My goodness, this is, this is a Holy Ghost night. This is a, a night of vision. This is a night of, of training up. This is a night for you to, to see further into what God has called you to do. There is nights like this that, you know, the things change. You know, things change. You know, change happens in a moment, but the results take time. So never be discouraged. God is working with you. And you need to stay the course, and you need to stay focused, and you need to stay, stay full of faith, full of the Holy Ghost, full of joy, full of peace. You know, knowing that God has a perfect plan for you, and part of his plan is for you to be connected in the right place. So how many of you are, you are thankful that you're connected in the right place? That Come on. You are connected in the right place. You are connected in the right place, and that's part of actually you having the perfect plan and purpose in your life. Because whatever God has called you to do, you could never do by yourself. And then one of the first things that you realize after you get saved, after you receive the Holy Ghost, then you realize that God plugs you in a place where you can grow. Come on. He places you in a family and in a place where you can grow. And so that's, that's, uh, that's one of the key principles Key principles in order for you to see the fullness of God in your life. The fullness of the purpose of what God has called you to do is being plugged in in the place where you're going to set roots in and then you're going to grow up. And that is God's plan and God's purpose for your life that you define and you find who God has called you to build with. It is very important, very important. And today, you know, the Lord really, you know, prompt me to talk about unity. Come on, unity. Everybody, you know, part of the part of part of unity, a lot of people, you know, part of part of the blessing of God is sowing and reaping. Part of the blessing of God is having a vision. Part of the blessing of God is having a plan and a purpose. Part of the blessing of, uh, of God and the empowerment of God is receiving the Holy Ghost. But the blessing, the commanded blessing, where you actually begin to see the results from the supernatural to the natural has to be with unity. It, because God's commanded blessing, it, it comes to you when you are in a place with your brothers and your sisters, with your arms linked, and that you are going for one vision, for one plan, and one purpose. If you want to begin to see the supernatural hand of your, in your life, everything that God has spoken to you, everything that God has shown you to come into a reality, then immediately you begin to find out who God has called you to build with. And we, you don't have to go further than if you are married with your wife. With, I mean, I mean, that's the Kerbal, right? Everybody's like, man, who am I supposed to be building with, right? But you and your family in who God called you to build with is in your home first. You got to build your home. You got to build your children because the greatest businessman that the world will ever seen will come out of your home. Come on. You should be excited about that. You know that you are racing out. The next generation that will usher, that continue to bring forth the power, the mighty power of God in a society, the mighty power of God in a generation. And so as you begin to stir unity within your home, as you begin to realize who God has placed you next to you, next to you to begin to build, and your greatest business and your greatest, uh, you know, Achievement as in life is going to be building up who with God put you with. And that is with your loved one. If you are married, he called you to build with your wife. And he called you the first business that people that you're going to raise up is going to be your children. Because you're going to raise up children that are after God's business. And when you could do that, when you see that, then when you go to your business, then you'll be able to raise up everybody else. 
you'll be able to raise up everybody else. And so to me, it's always, it always comes to where are we are going to begin to stare the unity. And when, where are you are going to begin to steal the principles? You have to begin to steal the principles within your home because that's where the principles are practiced. That's where, that's where the foundation of growth is going to come upon your life. If you're in unity and if you're in covenant, if you're submission to authority, you know, where does that begin? If you cannot do it in your home, what you build outside will be hollow. It will not be able to stand. And so, you know, there always has to be a place where you begin your success. And your success begins in your heart and your relationship with the Lord. And then it begins in your home. Because if you're able to apply the principles of unity in your home, then it'll be just It'll be amazing that you'll be able to do it outside in the business world as well. You'll be able to do it. It will be amazing to see what God does in the business realm outside as you do it in your home. And so it is important because the children and your wife are not going to do what you say. They're going to do what, how they see you act. And so you need to be a man of character in your house. You need to be a man that is under authority in your house. You need to be a man that is in covenant and unity in your home. Because as your family sees you, the world will as well. And so it is very important that as a businessman and a businesswoman, you begin to lay that foundation in your home. Because you'll be able to go to places where nobody will go. Because you will have a strong backbone, a strong foundation a strong vision, and guess what? Businesses are made out of what? They're made out of people, and people have what? People have families, and so as you begin to focus on the things that you need to do in your home, behind doors, what, how you're speaking about your authority, how you're speaking with the people that you're working with, if they hear you complaining about your leadership, you're going you're gonna to be raising up children that are weak, they're always going to be blaming somebody else. They're never going to be taking, you know, full responsibility for their actions. And so that's why in our home, in our business, we are men of one vision. We are men of covenant. We're men of unity. We're men of submission to authority. Unity is not when everything is going bad, good, but it's when everything is being shaken. That's when you test really unity, you know. And so God has set up a foundation for every single one of us so we can be successful in what he calls us to do. But everything begins in the home. Everything begins in the home. And why do I drive this so strong in everything that I do? Because if I don't have a strong foundation in my home, what I'm building, it'll soon enough be broken because it doesn't have the right roots to be sustained. You know, and so as you begin to live this on a daily basis, we never complain. We never complain. I always say to my family, whatever is going on, he said, we're going to keep doing the right thing. We're going to be keep honoring. We're going to be men and women under authority. We're going to be in unity and we're going to be in covenant. It doesn't matter because all I can control is what I do. You cannot control what anybody else does. And the word of God says, I never seen the righteous forsaken of his seed begging for bread. So as you continue to do the right thing, God will raise you up. God will lift you up and God will put you in places to be to be the light that he has called you to be because you have cultivated his principles, you have cultivated his precepts in your life and then it begins to show in everything that you do and it begins in your home. And this is the main focus that I focus everything that I've done when the Lord completely began to explode everything that I did he began to spoke about unity in my home that means that I begin to speak life in my home that means that I begin to speak unity in my home that begin that means that I begin to speak healing in my home that means that I begin to speak the vision the plan and the purpose and out of there that's where the Lord began to race me up and take me where no man would go because I was with 
willing to do what nobody else wanted to do. Because in your home, nobody's watching you. Out there, everybody is. So it is easy to do things when everybody's watching. But God sees the heart when nobody's watching. He sees it. And that is the heart that ultimately gets promoted. Gets promoted. 10% of the business, 10% of the ministry, it is done from the pulpit. 90% it is done when nobody's looking. And that's why God will promote you. If your promotion depends on, not on your boss, not on anybody that is around you, but it depends on God watching you and deeming you worthy, how would you act? Because if your promotion, it is connected to God, what he watches when nobody's watching, then that's where you need to be found faithful in your comments, in your actions, in your attitudes. That's where he finds you faithful. And that is the underlinement. That is the ultimate foundation that you really need to know before you're asking for a big business, before you're asking for big things because you got to ask for wisdom and that is wisdom from heaven that is wisdom from heaven wisdom from heaven knowledge from heaven and understanding from heaven and it takes those three to begin to understand the kind of power that it was given to you to do what he called you to do the day that Jesus resurrected from the dead that is the, the power that you receive. That is a, the, the anointing that you receive as you begin to do things right when nobody's watching. There is a special anointing that comes upon your life when you begin to do things that nobody's doing. And that anointing is what propels you into the things that everybody wants. It is that a special anointing that comes in your life when you say, no, I'm going to do the right thing. It doesn't matter what anybody's saying. It doesn't matter what anybody's doing. I will do the right thing. I will do the right thing. I will do when nobody's watching me. I will do the right thing because that's what a man of character is. Simply doing things where no, the right thing when nobody's watching. That is what a man of character is. That is a man that is in unity because unity and covenant and all of the principles are ultimately, ultimately tested first in your heart. They are ultimately tested in your heart because everything begins like a seed. And you have an opportunity to believe or not, to do the right thing or not. And what does it deem you to do the right thing or to do the wrong thing? is whenever you lean on the things of the spirit and not on the things of the flesh. And the word of God is full of the spirit and the word of God and the principles that we have to live by to lean on the spirit. If you don't know how to lean on the spirit, you're not going to know what to do. You're not going to know what to do. And if you don't know what are the principles of the spirit, the fruits of the spirit and the gifts of the spirit are not the same. You know? The gift, the gift of the spirit are irrevocable. You're gonna, you, you know, they're given to you. You cannot give them back. You know, but the, but the gift of God, but the fruit of the spirit is what you need to deem your life by, right? You know, joy, love, self-control. You know, those are the fruits that are gonna maintain and sustain the gift of God in your life. Those, that's what sustains the gift of the gift the talent that God has given you. The fruits of the Spirit is the characters that we need to live by, and that's what allows us to be in unity. That's what allows us to be one-minded and focused. And one of the things that really, it is ultimately one of the most important things at the beginning, in the middle, and at the, and at the end, and even further than that into eternity is going to be unity. If we're really kingdom business, you need to understand unity. If you don't understand unity, if you don't understand how to build with unity, you're always going to have something missing in your business, in your family, in your relationships. And you're never going to really see the fulfillment, the fullness of God's blessing in your life unless you understand unity. Unless you understand what it takes to build something, what it takes to be 
you know, to be connected, to be in covenant. Covenant is not a transaction. Covenant is not a transaction between you and I. Covenant is simply a promise of God that he will bless you. Covenant, covenant, it is the love of God in your life that it is irredeemable. He loves you. He loves you. Covenant is based out of love. You know, it didn't matter what you did. He still loved you. He still took care of you. He still died on the cross. That is the love of God in your life. And a lot of these things apply for the covenant in, in, in business, applies in everything that you do in life. And so when you're building, you understand the principles that are going to allow your life to make the right decisions at the right time in the most important times. That is very important. And and to me, one of the things that we begin to realize as, as, as it was whenever, you know, whenever I started to be, you know, uh, in unity in my home, and I began to see how God was putting everything together. God was putting everything together, and he began to work in my heart. He began to work in my vision. You can never have unity if you don't have a vision, Okay. And that's the number one thing. So seven steps for unity. That's what I'm going to give you today. Seven steps of unity. And I'm going to give you, you know, um, you know, scripture references for it. You know, you need to be on one mind and one vision. You know, two heads is a monster, right? Everybody is under somebody. And the Lord has a hierarchy. And how does, how does that work? In the kingdom of heaven, there is a hierarchy. In the kingdom of heaven, there is an order. In everybody finding their place, that's whenever we're going to find the ultimate unity. You know, when everybody knows that you don't have to be the number one to be blessed. Everybody thinks, if I'm the number one, I'm going to be blessed. Who told you that? Who told you that? The, if, if the body wins, we all win. Come on. Can you say Amen. If the body wins, we all win. And there are parts where you need to be plugged in that you are going to give your 100% effort, you know. And so, you know, you got to have one mind. You got to have one vision. And that is when God begins to put everything together for you. You know, he, he begins to show you what is the plan and the purpose of why he placed you where he placed you, why he put you with the person that he put you, he, whoever you got married with, the plan and the purpose. Obviously, you get first together with your heart with the Lord. You get your heart right with the Lord. You give your life to the Lord. You get filled with the Holy Ghost and fire because at the end of the day, the ultimate unifier is going to be the Holy Ghost. And so the Holy Ghost will allow you to plug in and be part of a vision that it is greater than yours. Your vision is never going to be the biggest one. Okay? Your vision is always going to work to plug in within, within God's big plan and big purpose. You know, a lot of people have like many ideas. And, oh, my, this is my, you know, the Lord, uh, you know, it seems like everybody has the same idea. Oh, my goodness, the Lord told me the same thing. Oh, it told you the same thing. It told, it told you the same thing. So whose idea is it? It's nobody's. It's God because he gave it to you. And he's, he's dropping in everybody's heart part of the vision so they can come together and be in unity. And so God begins to give you a vision. God begins to give you a purpose. So you need, in order to have unity, you need to have one vision, one plan, one purpose. And that vision has everything to do with who God placed you to work with and who God has put you to work under. And that is very important because nothing comes without impartation. Everything is an impartation. God is always going to partner with men to do something here on earth. And so you're never floating by yourself. You're never just going to doing whatever you need to do or you think you should do. Actually, leadership, the, the more we take our company to the next level. So last year, you know, last year, uh, uh, we, we, you know, our company did a little bit over, you know, $60 million, $60 million. And at that point, you know, praise God, you know, celebrate. You know, if you celebrate what happens to me, it'll happen to you. Come on, you know. Who, who wants to have a $60 million company? I mean, do you have the character? What you celebrate continues to happen to you. You know, and that's one of the things that I really I say this testimony because I want to see how people react. You know, I'm like, you got to be happy because we're all advancing the kingdom. And if it happened to me, it can happen to you. 
There is no exception of people. There is no exception of person in God's kingdom. God respects faith. That's what he respects. He respects faith. And so, you know, really, you know, we, we begin to build a company, and the Lord has done amazing things in what we've done. And last year, you know, it was a great, the biggest growth we've ever had in the last, you know, five years and a half that we had the company. And so, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people will say, hey, you know, uh, man, you can do pretty much whatever you want, you know. This is the question. Could you still be under authority if you were a millionaire? Could you still be under authority and mean being being able to take counsel, being able to take direction when pretty much you don't have to take anything from anybody? Can you still do that? God has to build you that character because he rather has you and have you in heaven than it with nothing that have you in hell with everything. This is the truth. This is what God begins to build. And so, you know, to me, there is something that happened last year, you know, as we had our biggest year and we had like a lot of exposure and people know what we're doing and everything you know, one of the things that, you know, people come to me and they ask me, you know, well, now you know what to do. And I say, absolutely not. Now is where I take the most advice. Now is when I'm even more under authority. Because if I could do with, you know, with the kind of advice, with the kind of application, if I could do what it happened last year, could you imagine if I doubled down the good things that I did? You know, see, money and prosperity is not a free car so you can go do whatever you want to do. That's why a lot of people are not successful. Most of the people don't, don't have businesses. Most of the people are self-employed so they can do whatever they want. No, that's the reality of things. You know, but when God gives you one mind, one spirit, when he begins to raise you up, he gives you a vision and he gives you a purpose and he gives you direction of what you need to do. And the directions are always going to be after raising people up. It's not going to be after your selfish motive. It's always got to be connected to souls. It's always got to be connected to the kingdom of heaven. And so that's whenever you begin to realize the differences between business in the, in the world and businesses in the kingdom of heaven. And because there is two ways to be successful, people try to be successful the way that they do things in the world and apply it in the kingdom of, have, of God and it'll never work out. And that's why you see a lot of Christians spinning their wheels. You know, a lot of Christians spin in their wheels because if it was about believing, if it was about, you know, giving one offering, everybody would be rich by now. So obviously it's not about that. It's about the heart and the principle that you give with. It's about the vision that you're under. It's about God's plan. It's about God's purpose. And it's about how you, what you do before you bring the offering into the bucket. It's about whether your offering will be taken or not. And that's why being a man of character, that's why doing the right thing behind doors, it means so much. Because when you really bring your offering, then your offering is qualified. And that's why, you know, I'm so excited that we are beginning to bring, you know, we're, we're beginning to, to really get to share how the Lord has done what he's done in our life. And God is so meticulously, he's so in order, he gives you every single step. I mean, living by the Holy Ghost is living in order, guys. Living by the Holy Ghost is not going doing whatever you want to do. You actually become a man of order. You become a man of character. You become a man of integrity. It is not a car to go do whatever you want to do on your own. A Holy Ghost man is a man under authority. Is a man that is able to organize things. A man that is able to separate things. That's what a Holy Ghost and fire man is. Is I will do this business and I will absolutely not do this business. You got to have standards in your life. The things that you do and the things that you don't do. And so, you know, that's, you know, that's what I, 
I began to realize last year, and I said, you know, I begin to actually be surrounded by more counsel, godly counsel. And that was the people that God had already put me under, you know. It, there was no new people coming around. You know, I'm not looking for more anointed people. I'm looking for who God put you to bless me and to build with. That's who I'm looking for. I'm not looking for, for a new sermon. I'm not looking for a new somebody doing something new. No, I am connected where God has connected me with. Pastor Rodney, it is our pastor. He's where he put me under, and that is until Jesus comes back. As this plan is simple for me. There is nothing else that I'm looking for, nothing else that I need to go search for, because my vision helps to serve the bigger vision, which is going and make disciples to all the nations, teaching them the things that I taught you, and these signs will follow you. You'll lay hands on the sick, they'll recover, you'll cast out devils, and whenever you begin to... Live this. Whenever you get this ingrained in your heart, then you are a man of a kingdom. Because you got to become a kingdom man before you build a kingdom business. Everybody's looking for a kingdom business. Nobody's looking to be a kingdom man. What is a kingdom made out of? It is made of kingdom mentality men. And that's what God is interested in raising in this time and raising in this hour. So people, men and women that are under one vision, that are together by the Holy Ghost, that understand where God has plugged you in, that's wherever you can begin to put roots and grow. You don't put roots by jumping from place to place to place. You don't do that. You don't grow that way. Try to move a tree a hundred times. It's going to die by the third time. It is very important. And that was to me, that was one of the greatest keys of my success is understanding which vision I was connected to and which hands I was supposed to lift up. Come on, that is what a man of God needs to be looking for. Because the greatest in the kingdom is the one that serves the most. That's what a kingdom business is. And so, yeah, we'll talk about, like, all the great things that we're doing. But if, if we just talk about a kingdom business, but we don't talk about a kingdom, man, we're, we're really losing the whole purpose off of it. Because it's about raising people up. Raising up disciples in this last hour, in this last minute, that are going to move the needle in this generation. And that you will usher the end time move of heaven. And you're going to see nations shaken by the power of God. And then the business, God's going to give you the wisdom. God's going to open the doors. God's going to open every single thing that he has for you. You will receive when you become a kingdom man. When you become a man that is led by the Holy Ghost, by the Holy Ghost and fire, and the Word of God is what stands you up, and the Word of God is what lifts you up, is what you do, what you live daily, what is going to actually make you a kingdom man, and therefore you will be able to have a kingdom business that will be impactful, because if you're not teaching principles, you're just teaching transactions. transactional men you're teaching people how to have covenant with mammon with money and not with the word of God that's what you're doing and so that's why you know I, I know I know for a fact that now God has beginning to open really the doors and and the understanding because we're finally raising up men raising up men that are able to actually withstand that kind of responsibility a kingdom business is a big responsibility. It is, a, it is not a little thing. I'm telling you, when all opportunities are coming your way, when money is being thrown your way, if you don't have the principles, you'll be able to be taken out like this. Like Pastor Corey says, have over 20 plus years in the ministry and people come and go. But God is raising up a group and an army of men that will not compromise in this last hour. That they will usher the power of God in this generation. This is the time. This is the time to do it.
And when you become a man that teaches and lives the word of God and you become, you raise people up, you begin to raise people up, then you become God's best friend. And whenever you become God's best friend, nothing will be with hell and you'll be able to do everything that God has called you to do. Finances are not going to be an issue when you're a real kingdom man, you know? And then God's going to, and then God will continue to increase your faith. I'm telling you, there is a faith that is being poured up in this time that is going to allow us to go the last leg. And we're going to be victorious and we're going to be glorious. And we're going to be the men and women that God has called us to do. And we will be the leaders in the cities and the nations and in the industries. And God will breathe on you. He will breathe on you. So you have to be in unity. You have to be in unity. You have to be in one mind. You have to be in one vision. 2 Corinthians 13, 11, If you want to go there real quick. Come on. Are you receiving something today? Are you receiving something? I was telling my guys, I'm like, man, this place is going to be just full, just for kingdom business. You know, I mean, church is going to be lined up, out there, people out there. You know, this will be full, just for kingdom business. And then, you know, the services, our church is going to explode because this is what people need. This is this church, churches in cities and strategic places is what God wants in this hour. He wants churches that are filled with the power of God, that are willing to give it to the people unadulterated, that will be able to give them straight up what they need and allow the anointing and the power of God to come in to restore their lives. This is the kind of church that the body of Christ needs everywhere around the world. And you are blessed to be here today. You are blessed. You don't have to go to church. You get to go to church. Come on. You get to. You get to come into the house of God and serve and give your best. You get to. You get to. You get to. Praise God. 2 Corinthians 13, 11. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Can we rejoice? Come on. Let's rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Strive. Let's go for it to restore everything. Let's to restore everything that the devil tried to take away from you. God will restore it. Strive for restoration in every single area of your life. The enemy is a liar. The enemy is defeated. You will have everything restored and the enemy will pay a hundred times full in Jesus' name. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in, this, live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. My goodness. My goodness, that's powerful. That's powerful. Philippians 2.2. 2. Then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being in one spirit and one mind. So God, whenever he begins to prepare to do something big and something great, he begins to gather his people after one mind, one spirit, and one goal. And the, 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 the one mind, the one spirit in this place is that West Palm Beach will be shaken by the power of God. Come on. You know, there are people restored. That there are people, you know, moving the needle. And this will be a ministry that will impact the nations in Jesus' name. Amen. And it, it's already, it, it is already is, you know. And so you have to be in one mind and you have to be in the same spirit. And you cannot be in the same spirit unless you don't know the word of God. 
unless you don't know what are the principles of God, unless you don't know what grieves the Holy Ghost and what does not grieve the Holy Ghost. That's why whenever you're in business, you have to be full of the Word of God, which is God's principles, and then the Holy Ghost will flourish and will be able to direct you. So then you'll be, you're able to now make better decisions in business because you're not leaning on the flesh, but you're leaning on the Holy Ghost. And that's what begins to make a difference between a regular business, the world business, of a kingdom man business. That's what you need to begin to look after. So number one is being one-minded, one vision. The second one, you need to be in the same spirit. In the same spirit, the spirit of God does not work without order. It works within order. It works within authority. So it is very important. The part of being in one mind and one spirit is that you know who your authority is and who you're under, and that's where you get plugged in. You don't go back and forth debating whether it is or it is not. You're just simply under authority because you can see the fruit in your life. Everything good bears fruit, and good fruit that lasts, that remains. You and this house has a, have a fruit that is not only a fruit, but is a fruit that remains. And so you begin to be a man and a woman that is actually leaving the fruits and the proof of God's power in your life. So you need to under being one mind and one, one spirit. Then, uh, you know, the second one, obviously, we read uh, uh, Philippians 2.2. 2. And then the third one, in order to be in unity, you have to be humble. You have to be humble. It says God gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. So meaning resisting is you're in the same room with somebody. And you're like, you're not doing things right, and you're trying to hug them. They're like, no, I, I, you know, I cannot be, I, I, I'm not, I don't identify with that kind of love. Because proud people are always going to try to come and make things their way. They're always going to try to come and, and get their spin on things. You know, trying to make it look like they're under authority, but they're really not. They're really not. So you need to really check your heart. You really need to be humble. You really need to be humble. And then this is in 1 Peter 3, 8. Finally, all of you, be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate, and be humble. Isn't this just so lifting up? Isn't this just begins to lift up your spirit, really giving you the real principles of the word of God, of what you build up unity with? You got to be compassionate. You got to be humble. You got to be humble. You got to be like-minded. You know, the three, the three, be like-minded, be like-minded, be in, be in unity, be in unity, be, be full of the spirit, be full of the spirit of God. So we're beginning to see the things that separate the world and the world businesses, and then we begin to see what kingdom business is all about. So now you begin to understand what's actually going to make your business go to the next level. You actually begin to understand that unity ultimately, and you understanding the definition of unity is going to help you to do the right thing, being a kingdom man. And so being, being a man of unity in the light, not in darkness, because there is a lot of people that are going to come around trying to give you a sad story because misery loves company. Misery always going to love company. And then if you're a man of the Holy Ghost, you're immediately going to find out because people that are full of mystery, people that are not happy, they're not necessarily having the greatest fruits in their life. It seems like it, but out of the heart, the mouth speaks. You need to give me only five minutes with a person, and I'll tell you immediately where they're at. You need to be able to know that. I, I mean, I, it, doesn't really it doesn't really take much to sermon out of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so, and so you know, it's just, it's just 90, 95% of the people in the world. They'll be able just to talk, talk, talk. And you know what? You will be able to know exactly why they are where they're at. Immediately. You don't need to go that far, you know? So, you know, finally, all of you, be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate, and be humble. Be humble. It's, you know, I'm going to buy a helicopter, and I'm going to call it Humblebee. <laughs> That's how humble I am. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> 
No, I'm not joking. You think I'm joking. My guys are here. No, I'm literally not joking. Come on. Don't you want humble people around? You become what you surround yourself with anyway. So you're going to be around a bunch of arrogant, uh, arrogant people that are not doing anything, or you're going to be surrounded a bunch of humble people that are doing something. There's only two types of people, haters and builders. Which one are you? You are building. You're always building. You're always building. He's going to take notes on that one. Yeah, we're either hating on people or we're building people. You know what I mean? And ba- building people a lot of the times is a rebuke. You know? It's not only petting people in the back and okay. No, no, no. People have it wrong, man. I mean, in this society now, nowadays, they call the good things bad and the bad things good. What does that sound like? The Bible, right? You know, people are so, so. you know, I mean, I, mean, I, I, I touch at the beginning with children because you need to be raising up your children with backbone. That's what you need to do. You really need, you know, really need to raise up your children. I mean, you know, the, the most successful generations are the parents of, immig- I mean, the sons of immigrants because they know what, what it takes, how hard it takes to build something, how hard work it means. You know, not just patting in your back, letting everything slide. You got to be a man and a woman that teaches your kids the principles, that teaches their kids that everything has a value. That everything has a cost and you get to practice with your children. You get to practice with your wife. And if you are a single man, you get to practice with the mirror. <laughs> so we have a lot of good looking people over here. So I'm, I'm sure, you know, they, they look themselves in the mirror, you know. Now, this is one of my personal favorites. Because you can only find unity with like-minded people. And a lot of the times, you can, you know, you know God will put you under, uh, under ministry, under uh, where he calls you to build with, right? But whenever it is time for you to begin to build, then it, say, repeat this after, uh, after me. Say, when it's time to build, it's time, to build. It's time to raise people up. Because that's how you're going to find the most like-minded people. The people that you raise up. The people that you get to influence. The people that you get to speak life to. You know? And so I love one of the, this ones. This is one of my favorites. Look low and you will be able to be lifted high. Look where nobody wants to look. Look where nobody's paying attention to. You know, last time I checked, I was not the, the, the main one to do what I'm doing today. Pastor Corey tell me, told me a very powerful word on Sunday. He said, God's not looking for perfect people. He's looking for willing people. Willing to lean on the Holy Ghost. Willing to lean on the things of God. Willing to lean on on. On what God has put you around. Willing to lean on the Holy Ghost. On the call of God in your life. That's what God is looking for. Looking will People that are willing to be humble. People that are willing to be raised up. And this is one of the greatest things. If you want to build a business. You're going to have to raise up disciples. And you cannot raise up that that you're not. You cannot raise something up that you're not. So you got to make sure that who you're trying to duplicate yourself, you are actually are that. Come on. You got to be able to be a true disciple of Christ. A true disciple where he had placed you under can you receive rebuke? Can you receive correction? Can you receive some? You know, whenever, whenever you, your confidence is, is in God and not in anything else, it's actually pretty simple and, and quick to receive correction. It's not hard. Because, because I wake up with this mentality. If there is anything that I have to change, I have to correct, and I have to move out of the way I am already willing to do it. 
That is just how I wake up every day. And then everything else that comes around me, I'm like, I'm going to act the right way. So I am already willing to make the change, changes. I'm already willing to make the adjustments. So when correction comes my way, I already made a decision to do it. So how hard can that be? But you can only do that whenever you're secure in who you are in Christ. Because whenever you begin to get rebuked, they begin to stare what you've been building with. The insecurities you've been building with, the character, the way you answer, the way you speak, the way you think. So whenever you're being challenged and that is your only pillar, that's why you defend it so much. That's why you get offended. God offends the mind so he can expose the heart. Come on. He's always going to go in that route because all the issues of life comes from the heart. And, and this is all part of kingdom business because if you're not willing to raise people up and are able to teach them properly, what kind of business are you going to build? Why do you even want a business for? If it's not to raise people up, if it's not to connect it to heaven, if it's not to connect it to the kingdom, what kind of business are you building anyway? And so it really goes directly with you being a builder and not a hater. You know, a lot of it, you're going to be challenging your mentalities. And a lot of people get offended where it hurts. And then there is a reason why. You know, because God wants to heal that area in your life and he wants to replace that foundation that is wrong. He wants to take it out and he wants to put a new one. He wants to really change everything that you, you know, that you've been building. And a lot of the times, I'll tell you something, people suffer and they don't suffer actually physically. They actually suffer mentally. Because it's in the mind where everything is going and it's going and it's going and it's going. And God wants to renew your mind. God wants to renew your mind. God wants to renew your mind. You know? And it's by preaching the word of God. The washing of the word of God in your life. It's when you're hearing this word that we're preaching, you know, it washes you. And it washes you because the word of God washes you. It washes you and it changes things and removes things of your life. Come on, can you say amen? Amen. The real kingdom business is the one that builds kingdom men first. That's what what kingdom business is. Because being about our father's business, you know, Jesus said it whenever, you know, he went and he was 12 years old. He was preaching in the synagogues and he said, I'm about my father's business. What was he doing? He was talking to people. He was teaching people. He was confronting people. That's what he was doing. He was about his father's business, sharing, the, sharing what he was sent to on this earth. So the most precious thing on this earth is people. That's why you want business, because business is just another tool to reach more people. You have no idea how many people we have in our company that just wore at their house wondering what they were going to do with their life. Somebody knock on the door, they get saved, they get set free, filled with the Holy Ghost, plugging in a church, all of it within six months. That is supernatural. That is supernatural acceleration. Who's willing to do that, you know? And so we're going back to, to... If you want to build, you know, if you want to begin to build, if you want to begin to bring unity, you got to put your eyes where nobody wants to put their eyes on. And then you go, um, you go to Romans 12, 16. What Romans 12, 16 says this, live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud. God must have something against pride people. I'm telling you. I mean, it might be because the very thing that God kicked, the devil kicked out of heaven was pr- pride. Maybe. I don't know. You know, you make your assumptions. No, I'm kidding. But, you know, it says live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be, be, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Don't be Conceited. Conceited is meaning you're just so prideful, so arrogant. 
Like, I'm telling you, the richer I've met, the more humble I've met. You know, actually, the, the, the prideful people are the ones that are trying to pretend something they're not. They're living by, by how people perceive them. You know, that's, that's what prideful people, they're trying to pretend who they're not. They're trying to take a, a, an identity that is not theirs, and that's what they're so prideful. You know, that's what they're so prideful. And so why does it say there, be, a, be willing to associate with people of low position? It's not talking about people that are just low and they're doing drugs and everything. No, it's just everybody, in, everybody starts somewhere. Just like you did. And the Lord rose you up. And at the end of the day, we receive grace by the sacrifice that Jesus did on the cross. Because who rejected him, you know, it was the people that were supposed to accept him. And that's why we received the grace. You know, he said, go to the highways and the byways. That's, and that's who we were. And so if you're not willing to get down and lift people up in the low positions, you have to understand that people start always somewhere. And, and, and just like I was not the one that I was supposed to be, you know, well, well, there is a plan and a purpose in my life. I know that. But I'm, if people would have looked by the appearances, nobody would have gave me a second look. But God did. Because he knew the plan and the purpose that it was in my life. And there is a plan and a purpose for your life. So if you ever felt overlooked, let me tell you something. You're the very person that is up next to promotion if you put your eyes on Christ. You know, I mean, uh, I tell the people, man, put your eyes where nobody wants to put your eyes on. Put your eyes where nobody's looking. And a lot of the people think, okay, well, I got to go with the homeless. I got to go. I got to go everywhere. No, at the end of the day, the only people that you can raise up are the hungry and the humble. So wherever you find hunger and whenever you find humbleness and willingness, that's where you go. Jesus himself didn't do anything when people were not humble or hungry for him. He didn't even do miracles there. He just passed by, you know. And so you got to be willing. And we have people that literally used to live in a car and people that, you know, were, you know, you know traveling around the world doing big businesses. But they were both hungry and humble. And God began to raise them up, you know, because both of them were lost. You know, lost is lost. Yes or no. It doesn't matter where you're at. If you're lost, you're lost. You know, you can be under a, bri under a bridge or you can be in a penthouse. If you're lost, you're lost. Ain't that right? So, you know, that's where everything just streamlines. Everything is the same. You got to go look, find the people that are hungry and are desperate for the Lord and wherever God sends you to. I work with all kinds of people and we're able to raise them up to the same standard. And the standard is the word of God. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter your college. It doesn't matter anything. You know, if you're hungry, if you're humble, if you're willing to believe and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior and, begin, and receive the power of the Holy Ghost, there is no devil in hell that will be able to stop the plan and the purpose of God in your life. Can you say amen? This is what kingdom business is all about. This is how you, this is the principles. And you're like, okay, Miguel, but what are you doing with your business? I'm just telling you what I did. I'm just telling you what I did. You know, one guy I was interviewing, one guy, and I'm telling you all of these principles. And he's like, okay, well, I heard all of that. Now, how do I make money? I'm like. Well, you came for the wrong thing. You were after money all along. And that is no good reason to be, a, to be thinking about, you know, doing a kingdom business. Isn't that shocking? It's about building people up. And as you do that, you know, seek the kingdom of heaven and all his righteousness. And everything shall be added unto you, right? So how do we practically do that? You know, how do you practically do that so you get behind that word of God that will, that brings the blessing where blessings chase you? How do you do it? 
And I'm just telling you right now how I did it. I begin to raise people up. I begin to fill them with the Holy Ghost. I begin to preach faith. I begin to speak life. I begin to change things that I needed to change. I begin to be an example. That's how I did it. And on top of everything, when you, when you have a real kingdom mentality, then you want to do everything with excellence. And I did my job with excellence. And I was the hardest working man that you could ever have seen out there because I had a purpose and I had a supernatural power inside of me that fueled me to do things that nobody else could do. You know? And so that's whenever I begin to receive the power of the Holy Ghost. And just recently, you know, I heard somebody and I really liked it. It's not working hard. You got to give your full effort. That's what it is, your full effort. I like full effort better because that means I'm going to give all myself. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to withhold nothing. I'm going to give my full effort to the Lord. I'm going to give myself because working hard, you can work really hard. But I really want to give my full effort. I want to do everything within my power to do what God has called me to do. And, and that including humbling yourself. Why don't you give your everything to be humble? Right? Isn't that the word of God? I mean, we heard like three, four times in the word of God. That might have to do with something, you know? And so, you know, it, it really impresses me that at the highest level of, um, of business, and, and we get to ch talk with a lot of people, we have the, you know, the blessing that, you know, to be able to, the blessing to be able to, you know, talk with a lot of people. And, and, you know, and they're really at, at the highest level. Recently, you know, probably about four, five, six months ago. Um, don't you like that? Four, five, six months ago? I, I really don't know. I mean, it's been a year, Pastor. I don't even want me to tell you. I mean, it seems like I was here yesterday, you know. So. <laughs> what do you want me to tell you? I mean, it feels like. Let me tell you, encourage you something before I tell you. You're not out of time. You are on time. Come on, you are right on time because God holds his, the time in his hands and whatever time you think you lost, he will recuperate it because what man can do in 40 years, God can do in a day. Can you say amen? You are on time. Say this, I am on time. I am on time to receive the full blessing that belongs to me. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Can you give a bigger amen? Hallelujah. I think somebody needed to hear this. Who needed to hear this? Well, we have pretty humble people here. It's really good. I mean, if they, I don't know. I mean, I, I need the Lord every day. I mean, I'm like this, you know. At least I'm preaching myself happy, you know. I'm always happy. <laughs> to me, everything is awesome. Who was like, man, I crashed my car. I'm like, wonderful. So great. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, yeah, man. The Lord has a good plan for you. You know what I mean? <laughs> People are like, okay. You know, Miguel's going to say the same thing always. You know what I mean? I'm kidding. Maybe not. <laughs> but maybe I am. You know, it's, it's, just, it's just so awesome. I'm just happy all the time. Just be happy. You know, just be happy. I mean, that'll set you free. Just be happy. Just be thankful. God's good. You know, your dog still has his head on. It's all good. Find things to be happy about. Come on, can you be happy? Aren't you blessed today? Come on, I'm, I'm staring you happy today. I'm saying joy inside of you. Come on. We're blessed. We're living in the finest hour of the display of the power of God. And you're going to see things you've never seen in your life. And you're going to be seeing family members that you've been praying for coming to Christ. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. 
Well, I, I've not forgotten about the story I was about to tell you. <laughs> I, I've not forgotten about that. You know, uh, People are going to be set on a path of conquering in this city. You will conquer everywhere where your, the sole of your foot puts on, it will be yours. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. There is an anointing to take over. An anointing to take over everything that God has called you to do and take over with. There is an anointing in this place to take this, the unity of this place will take everything to another level. Everything, your life and your relationships, where you're plugged in, there is an anointing to take over. There is an anointing to take over in this place. Oh my goodness, there's an anointing to take over in this place. There is an anointing to take over. There is an anointing to take over in this place. And you'll see more children that you've ever seen in your life come into Jesus in Jesus' mighty name. The children's ministry is going to explode in this place. Can you say amen? An anointing of children's ministry like you've never seen before. The Lord's going to bless you. There's going to be a big uproar in the city that God is in town and that the Holy Ghost and power is in this place and this will be a landmark for every other church in West Palm Beach in the south of Florida. Can you say amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 An anointing to take over everything that needs to be taken over. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Lift your hands up. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that the same anointing, the same wisdom that you give me to do what I call to do, it comes upon his life. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. The Holy Ghost. Come on, you're going to be a big part of it. Come here. God's going to use you. You're going to be a big part of this. You're going to be a big part of what's going to do in this place. And you will see growth, growth. And the things that need to be worked out will be worked out. In Jesus' mighty name. It is my burden. It is not yours. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I see mighty men of God being raised up out of this place. There is a strong army lining up in the city of West Palm Beach. And it will be the river of West Palm Beach that will raise up mighty men and women of God that will not back down. And this time, in this hour, it is an army that God will raise up in Jesus' mighty name.
In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. A mighty move of God. A mighty move of God. An anointing to take over the city. An anointing to take over the territory. An anointing. God needs a group of people. A small group of people where two or three come together. And in this place there is more than two and three. Can you say amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 An anointing to raise up mighty men to take territory out of this place to expand God's kingdom in Jesus' name. I feel the anointing for unity. 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 A unity that is an eternal unity, not a temporary unity, to build in this last hour, to build in this last hour, God is bringing a three-chord strength that it will not be broken in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on. over here lift up your hands never the same in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name God is doing a new thing God is doing a new thing a new thing you'll walk at another level of authority says the Lord in Jesus mighty name on authority in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Man, this was stirred in my spirit this, you know, this afternoon. Like God was going to bring... Such, such of a tight spirit of unity in, the, in this church that it was going to be the pillar and the example to many Amen. on how you stand up, rise up, and take over Amen. in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. By the Holy Ghost. 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 Bring this to the ladies over here. The hand of God is upon your life. Bring the three of them. The hand of God is upon your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Receive what you've been asking for in Jesus' mighty name. An example for your family in Jesus' mighty name. A pillar. A pillar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, there's an anointing to speak to people in this life that are in high places. Because that's exactly what I was about to share. I was called to a meeting with a, with, with a very prominent man. And one of my guys was, was here with me. One of my guys was here with me. And 
And I was sharing with him on the plane as we were presented with this, the biggest opportunity that anybody could really want, you know. And I told my, my, my guy, I said, look, the only, I don't care about the deal. The only reason why I'm going in this place is to be a light and to be a witness. And it was, it was, it was a pretty, it was a, in the almost over $50 million deals. And, you know, we were talking about all of this stuff. But I said, do not get it. I said, do not get distracted for a second. We are going to represent heaven. And if we get kicked out, we get kicked out. Are you good with it? And obviously I have great men. And they said, yeah, let's get kicked out together, you know. Well, I'm not sure that he really said that at the moment. But he was like, oh, dang, he's about to get real. We're about to really get kicked out, you know. This guy is a billionaire with a B. <laughs> no, this guy is a billionaire with a B. He's a, he's a, he's a billionaire, you know. Very prominent guy. You know, the, he, this guy invented the, um, the recipe to make cheese for pizza. So every pizza that is sold in the United States, he gets a couple of pennies. Can you imagine that? I mean, he patented. He patented the cheese. So every cheese pizza, hot, Domino's, I mean, Little Caesars, everything you can imagine, he gets paid. He was, he was nominated seven times, seven, eight times, seven, eight times to the Nobel Peace Prize, you know, a bright mind, a bright mind, a bright mind. And I remember that we walked into the room, I walk, we walk into the room and then, you know, there was him, you know, there was, uh, you know, the gentleman that introduced us. Obviously, I brought my team. I brought, you know, one of my guys that runs actually West Palm Beach. He's, he's pretty awesome. He's out of here, you know. And so, uh, you know, you know, we, we went there and I brought another friend of mine. He runs, he runs uh, you know, uh, almost a billion dollars in real estate. He's about 37 years old. He's a bright man. I mean, you talk to him and you don't have enough time to Google the words that he's saying. That's, that's how smart this guy is. You're like, I did not understand anything that you said. You just sound really smart. You come in with me. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I, I surround myself with smart people. I'll tell you that much. I'm like, this guy, he's good looking. He's like, he's smart. Not only good looking, he's smart. He actually knows what he's talking about. So you come in with me. So, you know, you guys, you guys just sit down. My goodness. I mean, the Lord's still touching people. I'm telling you. It's the anointing. It's not me. It's the anointing. So he's working in you. He's working in you. He's working in you. Come on. Can you feel the Holy Ghost working in you? Can you feel the Ghost the Holy Ghost doing a new thing in you. We overcome by the word of our testimony and the blood of, our, of the Lamb. Come on. That's how we overcome. So we were, uh, you know, we were there. We went there. And, um, and you know, I, I, you know I, I brought my team. And I really didn't speak much, to be honest with you. I mean, everybody was waiting for me to say something. And I'm like, look, man, I brought these guys. These guys are the ones that are going to speak. Actually, all I did whenever we walked in is, is I immediately introduced my team, right? I lift up my team. This is the greatest manager that runs, you know, West Palm Beach. And, you know, Evan is here. And I just said, he's here. He runs, runs a big region over there. And then I said, this is one of the brightest mining businesses I know. So I'm going to let him take the floor. And I just step back. I actually raised my team up. I didn't talk anything about myself. And this friend of mine that actually runs, that's why you need to run by principles. Because if you don't run by principles, the anointing is not going to move in the king to take over the kingdom, to take over the kingdom finances. Because it has to be different than the world. One is prideful, one it is not. You know? And so, you know, I said, you know, I actually, you know, gave credit to my team. And I said, oh, I'm going to let him speak. Because he knows all of these terms you want to hear, you know. And so, and so, you know, my friend, you know, and, you know, he was there. You know, one of my guys was there. He's, my friend was like, let me, you know, this is everything that Miguel said is great. But he didn't say anything about himself. And that's one of the biggest qualities that he has. Let me tell you what he's done. And he just begins to share about me. I mean, this guy that runs a billion dollar, you know, in, 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 in real estate. 
And then, you know, they begin to go back and forth in business. And there was a lady, there was a lady there that was kind of shutting down every single attempt that my friend had to engage, you know, in the transaction and what we were going to do and everything. This lady would shut it down and she would shut it down and she would shut it down. She was like asking, asking all these questions, being noisy about it. No wonder we found out later on that she takes care of like a lot of their real estate finances, you know. So she was like really there to keep us in check, right? And so you could see the world coming at it. You know, it was like an, ex an example of how the world does business, you know. Who's the most skillful? Who's going to get on the top, you know? And so I said, man, I didn't come here for this, you know. So I just really, I felt the Holy Ghost and I stepped in and I said, actually, before we talk about all of this, let me just tell you why we do what we do. And then the atmosphere changed immediately. Like the atmosphere changed immediately, and I began to share the testimony of why I do what I do, why I focus so much on people, why we raise people up. And he begins to really like this because he said, you know, man, my goal is to make 10,000 millionaires by the time I'm dead. And he's actually 87. I'm like, bro, you got like two years. I'm like... He probably is going to live to 100, to be honest with you. This guy is wired up. He's fresh as a lettuce. I mean, he's on, his, he's on his feet. He's saying questions, and he's talking about. So I begin to share with him that really, you know, what's struck with him, because he already has money. Why are you going to talk to me money about? He already has that. He's, people, the, the world is looking for what they've been looking for their entire life, and you got it inside of you. If you just let it come forth and represent God's kingdom, you got to be convinced that what the world needs you have inside of you. And then you will, you'll be able to represent Jesus everywhere you go. Everywhere you go. And so, you know, I just begin to share that. And I begin to, you know, tell him that, you know, it's about raising people up. And then, and then you know, I said, you know, one of the things... And to be honest with you, I don't even know why I say this, but, you know, it seemed right at the time. You know, <laughs> you're correcting a billionaire, you know what I mean? That's a really smart move. <laughs> when you're under the anointing. <laughs> if not, you're going to get, you know, kicked out. And so, you know, this really came out of my spirit. I said, you know, one of the things that I, we, we teach our people because he was being pretty combative, right? He was like going back and forth and saying things he didn't understand. I said, one of the things that we teach our people is we listen to understand, not to respond. People, you know, you are, you're listening to, to respond all the time. That's why you're not seeing growth. You just, you just want to, you just want to answer to what you're receiving because you're defending yourself. Somebody that wants to grow doesn't need to re defend themselves. They just need to learn. So, so he stopped for a second. I'm like, here we go, Evan. Get you stopped. We're going to get kicked out, bro. I'm like, this is it. This is it. The moment I've been waiting for. He stops and grabs a napkin and grabs a piece of paper. And he said, I never heard this in my life. He said, I'm sorry. I was responding. I was, I was, I was listening just to respond. But I know I don't know enough about this topic. He said, I'll never forget this. You taught me something new today. And he's worth about north of nine, ten billion dollars, something like that. A billionaire, more money than Trump, takes a, a notepad and takes a note. And he said, thank you, I'm going to make the adjustment right away. I'll make the adjustment. You know, and one of my guys that works with me, he, you know, he was like, I'll make the adjustment. I'll make the adjustment. And I said, bro, that's, that's a billionaire mentality. You'll make the adjustment, you know. And that's what he said. He said, I'll, I'll make the adjustment. I'll make the adjustment. He said, I'll make the adjustment. I was just listening to respond, not to understand. And we're a lot like that with God whenever we're, we're like asking him for things and, and we're just waiting to respond because we, we cannot wait to tell him what we want. He already knows what you want. He already knows what you need before you even ask for it. You got to come before him with thanksgiving, thanking him for what he already done. 
for the victory he has already given you. You know, for the blessing that he's, is already yours. For the miracle that is already yours. At the end of the day, that's what faith is anyway. You know, acknowledging what he has, he has already done in faith. You know, the things that are unseen. And so I remember that, you know, we chatted with him and, you know, he was like, he began to take notes. And I began just to share a testimony. Just begin to, to share the testimony of why we do what we do. And I said, man, I've seen God's hand in my life so many times that this is why we raise people up. And I shared the testimony of how, you know, you know, uh, when I was in, uh, you know, I shared the testimony that, you know, we were, we were expecting, you know, a, a baby with my wife and, uh, and how she was really believing. She was believing to, to um, you know, to have a natural birth. And she was really, really believing to have a natural birth. And, and you know, I, I had to link my faith with her. You know, that's one of the things that I begin to do. And then, you know, the time comes for her to, to, for her to have a baby, you know. And, um, and we're believing that she's going to have a natural birth. She had two C-sections. It's a high risk, you know. And so we're going for it. We're going for it. And then things, things were not looking too good at the beginning. They were not too, looking too good at the beginning. And, um, and I remember that, you know, there was a time that we, that we, you know, that we looked at each other and I had to make a decision, right? I had to make a decision. And then I said, honey, let's just get this baby out safe. And this is what I'm telling the guy. And I don't even know I'm going in this direction. But the Holy Ghost is in this place. And I, the last time I check is my testimony who's going to overcome, right? Yeah. You know, what the Lord has done in my life. You know, because that's going to speak to somebody. And, you know, it's, it's not necessarily testimony. It's the anointing whenever you speak by the Holy Ghost, you know, of what you're saying. And so, you know, you know, I, I begin to share this. And I'm like, you know, I'm just sharing with them. And I said, and, you know, when we, when we got to the operating room, you know, my wife was laying there, you know, she told me I felt something came out, out of my womb, and, and that's fine. And then, and then she told me, pray. And I say, you know, okay, and I begin to pray. And she said, no, pray harder, pray harder. And I said, okay, well, I'm going to pray harder. And then as soon as I begin to pray harder, she passes out. Now, 20 minutes have gone by by this time, you know, and I don't know what's going on. And we took a little bit to make the decision to take her to take her to get a C-section. And so, you know, there was a nurse there. And as I pray, I pray, 20 minutes have gone by. And as I pray, a nurse comes to me and stands in front of me and she tells me, you took too long. I hear you praying. We believe in many gods. This is what she said. We believe in many gods. Now, go see what your God can do. And she gets out of the way. And there, it lays my baby. She was dead for, she, was, she, she died. And I remember that, you know, as I walk, as I walk, as I walk to my baby, you know, and, and the nurses were completely destroyed because this is a full grown baby. This is a beautiful baby. And, you know, as I walk to it, as I walk to it, you know, I go to, I go to her and then the nurses just kind of like go back and kind of, you know, put their, you know, give, give me some space. And I remember that I didn't say anything. That the first thing that came out of me was, was, was the next sentence. And I said, in the name of Jesus, you will live and not die in Jesus' name. And as I say those words, my baby goes like, <gasps> and she begins to breathe. And, and I begin to just testify. One and the, and the nurse, just everybody looks at me astonished. Everybody looks at me astonished. And she says, she was like, she grabbed the baby and she said, you, your God did what he was supposed to do. Now let me go do what I need to do. I'm like, man, this is the devil right there. I mean, I was really, I'm like, 
man, the devil wear, you know, wears white, you know. <laughs> and she said, let me go do what I do. And he said, but this baby has been unresponsive, no oxygen for 20 minutes. Let me tell you something. It is like if you hail your baby underwater for 20 minutes and she will not be normal. And I said, Lazarus was dead for three days and he was completely fine. And my daughter is going to be fine in Jesus name. When God resurrects something, he does it all the way. He does it all the way. He does it. He does it. God's going to bring a resurrection power to give you what's yours. What you thought once it was lost, it'll come alive in Jesus' name. You got the power of the Holy Ghost, which is supersedes the money of this world. Because no money could have brought my daughter back, but the Holy Ghost, the, word, the power of the word did. And that's what we have that the world does not have. And they need it. There is a price to pay. That's why you need a godly character. That's why. That's why you need a character. That's why you need a godly character. That's why you need to be solidified in the word of God. That when you get squeezed, that's the only thing that comes out. Not complaining. Now, how could you do this, God? Now, negativity. You speak life, and that's the only thing there is inside of you. The word of God. Many are the tribulations of the just, but God will deliver them out of every single one of them. You know? And God did it for me. He'll do it for you. He'll do it for you. And I remember that as I say this testimony and I begin to share it, the wife tries to stop the conversation because she is a Hindu. She has all the gods you could ever imagine in her house. And she believes in the seventh eye and her mama's eye. And <laughs> <laughs> no, she, I mean, this is what people believe. I mean, they're Hindus. I mean, they believe like there is more gods in India than, you know, than, you know, than there is coal centers. And there is a lot of coal centers in India. <laughs> Hello, what are you? Hey, no, no, no. We love everybody over here, okay? We love everybody. <laughs> they tell you no and they're saying yes. I mean, Indian people are very rich, very wealthy. They're one of, like, the most prominent, you know, like, second generations Indians are taking over around here. Yeah, that's what people don't know. Like, all the sons of the immigrants are taking over, you know, because their parents are stealing these principles and stealing all of these things. So that's, you know, the wealth is not in the money. The wealth is in the principles. That's where the wealth is. Please, don't get it confused. You know, money is just a tool. The principles is what builds somebody up to be a man of God or not. That's all it is. That's all there is. There is no gray area out here. Everything is being separated and being very clear. If we don't do what we're doing now through business, then you have Grant Cardone and his wife and their spiritual journey speaking their trash because now they're trying to get in the spiritual realm because they achieve all the money and all that there is left is the spiritual. No, that's, that's what Grant Cardone's wife is doing right now, the spiritual journey. You know, and it's a mixture of, 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 it's a mixture of you know, Scientologists with Jehovah Witnesses where, with some, something that sounds Christianese. And imagine how confused people are going to be if they don't know the word of God in their life, if they don't have the Holy Ghost in them. 
That's why we need to do what we need to do. And whenever people think, oh, I'm in the business, I'm like, man, the world is, is, is lips and bounds. We got to take our place. We got to go and take over and be representatives of the power of God. He'll give it to you, you know, but you cannot do it without a character, without a godly character, without really understanding what God builds upon, you know, what a kingdom is built upon. And so, you know, we were... We were there, and, and then the wife tries to stop the testimony. And she's like, oh, 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 she tries to stop it. She's, she's kind of manifesting at this point. She's like, no, no, let's not talk about this. And the man stands up, and she says, no, no, I want to hear this. I've been waiting to talk about this, and nobody wanted to tell me. Let the guy speak. 87 years old. And everybody was intimidated because he had money. But what he needed, he had a need. And he needed Jesus. People need more Jesus than they need money. If they get the character of Jesus, the empowerment of Jesus, then everything else will make sense for them. And they'll do, they will do what God has called them to do the right way. But everything has been distorted. You know, chase this. You know, instead of chasing that, chase the money instead of the character. Everything is, is, is so quick. Everybody, there is not such a thing of getting rich quick. You'll never see that. The only way that you see something quick happening is after working 10 years or maybe five. You know, because everyone's like, oh, no, no, because there has to be a, God's not going to give anybody, anything to anybody that they, can, they don't have the stewardship. Because the kingdom of heaven is about stewarding. That's how you become a manager of, of, of more things whenever you're a good steward. So people that have a lot of things, they're usually, and they are very good stewards of what God gives them. You know? And so that's, that's, that's why, you know, when we were there, you know, I was stewarding the stage that he gave me. I had the opportunity to sell out and shut my mouth so I can get whatever amount of money I was thinking about getting it. Or I was going to represent heaven. You know, and, and what it really immediately I, I, I knew about the Holy Ghost was like so many people sat in front of this man for decades and nobody told them because everybody was interested about the transaction. Nobody told them. And I, I could see like a line of people that were Christians, that were believers, that they were like restrained from saying it because they were going to lose a deal. Because everybody knows how to have a covenant with money and not with the principles of God in their life. That'll, that'll really, if you want to get to the millions, to the 50, to the 20, that's what you're going to have to, that's what God, the kind of man God's going to build you to be. You know? And so, you know, I remember, you know, we shared with him. And all of a sudden, the lady that was trucking something down, I was not even paying attention. I was just looking at the guy. I was just looking at the guy. And he's just like, he's just like paying attention. This is an 80-something-year-old man with a napkin taking notes one after note after note after note after note. The wisdom of the Holy Ghost. The foolishness of God is the wisdom of men. Just imagine that. So I'm saying things by the Holy Ghost he never heard because his, his spirit was in search his entire life. That's why they have so many gods. Until they find the true God. They know. One thing about the truth is once you see it, you cannot unsee it. And Jesus is the truth, the way, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except it is through him. And you have the Holy Ghost to bear witness because as I am speaking, this lady begins to weep. In the middle of the meeting, she's weeping and she's crying. And the one that was striking every single thing, now she's weeping, she's weeping. And she said, I knew it. I knew it. Something similar, similar happened to me. And I knew I pray of a God and now I know who did it for me. Because God had delivered her. Out of a similar situation. And she said I didn't even know how to pray. I just call out of a name. And he did it. And now I know who did it. And she was weeping. And then after that it was such of a smooth meeting. They called us. 
I mean, the guy was like, you guys are family. I'm like, yeah, come here, uncle. Yeah, you're my uncle now. I have... <laughs> Uncle Dr. Reddy, come over here. I've been looking for you for 87 years. <laughs> Even though I'm only 30-something, you know, I've been looking for you. Uh-uh, you're going to be family now. You're family. You know? And we had the door open, you know, to minister to him. You know, we're going we're gonna, to, you know, we're going to go back and spend some time with him and minister to him, you know? That is the, really the reason why the Lord brought us there. You know, we've, we've, we've ended up working with the, you know, it was a solar farm and it was a big thing. And then one thing led to the other one. We waited for this. We waited for that. But, you know, when you have your eyes on Jesus, you're never disappointed. You're never disappointed. So never put your eyes on a deal. Never put your eyes on a business. Put your eyes on him. And see him bringing everything come forth at the right time for you. We're not in a rush to make a mistake. We're not in a rush to be a man or a woman of opportunity. An opportunity is a simple thing. It is an opportunity to be in the will of God or outside in the will of God. And that's why you have to know who you represent and why God has called you to be a business and a businessman or a woman. You know, in the industries. And so, you know, that opened the door for so many things. And, 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 and it really struck me that, you know, he was, the Holy Ghost compelled him. And that he was, he was touched. Obviously, his people were touched. But, you know, that he would be so humble to listen. But the thing about it, one thing that is very important in, in business, you have to have the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost demands attention. You could be a cleaning symbol that nothing comes out of it. But when you have the principles, when you have the kingdom of heaven at hand, then the Holy Ghost comes in and backs you up. And then this man was paying attention. Up his, it was the greatest deal of his life. And guess what? It was the greatest deal a man could ever make is receiving Jesus, making that change of his life. Come on. Can you say amen? So that's the greatest transaction you'll ever make. That's the greatest transaction you'll ever, you know, receive. And, you know, to me, it is, it is such a blessing to be able to do kingdom business, you know. Um, we're really striving to create something to where, uh, you know, kingdom businesses around the United States can plug in and be unified, you know. You know, a lot of the kingdom businesses that I go to, People, people say, this is amazing. What do I do now? You know, and, and, and I'm so happy that, the, that, you know, churches like this with Pastor Corey and many other ones that are the river, they actually can direct people to what they need to do next. You know, and now we're building systems and processes where people can, can, can access legal advice, advertising advice, sales advice, structure advice from people that are actually Holy Ghost and fire that have been taking the business from zero to 10 to 50 to 100 million dollars. And so that's what's coming next for us, you know. And so and and, you know, come on, you know, that's that's to be celebrated, you know. And then because there is a lot of churches out there, they don't have the river culture, you know. And so then we got to create something to connect them, you know, and that's a lot of, of what we're building now. You know, through our business, we're in a renewal energy and we're branching out in a few other things. You know, uh, you know, the company, you know, we we've we've uh, we made a transition. It is now it's called now Zone 5 because it's going to represent many products underneath. And so we're putting a tremendous infrastructure behind it. We're bringing all the right legal advice. We're bringing the right software. We're bringing the right lenders. We're bringing the right installers. We're bringing the right team. God is really surrounding us with people that have decades of experience that the reason why they're coming with us, not because they want money, because they're already being successful, but they want to have a meaning after, behind their life. And now we're going to teach all of the successful people that only acquire money how to have a legacy and have a meaning into eternity. Yeah. 
And that's what wealthy people are looking for. They're looking for meaning because they achieve everything, but they didn't achieve the greatest gift, which is salvation for them and for others. Come on, can you say amen for that? And so we have people that are the highest caliber of people that by the anointing. And it's not only the anointing. You need to do things in excellence. A lot of people think they have business. And like I said, they have, they're just self-employed. So they can go have a, you know, a day off whenever they want to. That's not a business. That's not a business. And so you know, when the more you teach people, now more than ever today, I am convinced that the only reason why that the body of Christ does not have what it belongs to them is because simply they don't know. They don't know. But God is really raising up a mighty man and group of women that are going to go and are going to preach the gospel and are going to preach the truth. And I got to get people out of darkness into light. And that's in every sense of the word. In every sense of the word, in business, in your family, in relationships, in everything. And so that's why, you know, now you carry an anointing of a king and a priest. You know, the king had all the financial backing and the priest had all the spiritual authority. But now Jesus said, now you are a king and a priest under the new covenant. Come on, that's to that's be celebrated that we can carry the power of God in every area of our life. And so now you're having these millionaires that are sitting down with absolutely no purpose. And then through what we're building, they're seeing a light where they can give a meaning and a legacy. And then the power of the Holy Ghost in there. And now we're raising people up that are in their 50s, 60s, multi-millionaires. But we're giving them what they've been looking for their entire life. And what they've been missing their entire life. And so now we begin to build something very strong. And that's why unity is so important. Because if you don't understand the basis of unity, you will not really have wisdom. You know? You know, wisdom and unity go hand in hand. Because everything that you do has to do with people. So how do you interact with people? How do you work with people? You know, how do you deal your businesses? You know? And so, you know, with us it is very... Uh, you know, very important that, you know, we're now creating a university on how it's called some five university on how we build our our renewal energy business. So people can come and learn what the steps that we took to do that, because everything that God gives you is not for you to hoard, but for you to give. OK, so that is the next thing. And so how we took our our solar, our, our solar company from, you know, you know, I mean, I think my friend made like $80,000 his first year to $7 million the second year to $19 million the third. I think it was about 29 the fourth. It was about 38 the, um, 38 the fifth. Uh, no, the, the fourth was about 38th. And then last year, which it was the full five years, so over $60 million. What steps did you take? What did you do spiritually and practically? Because... The uh, business is just the anointing practically applied. If it doesn't come into life, then what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? If you cannot apply the anointing that God put in your life, what do you do? I mean, how do you bring it out? How do you actually bring it forth? How does the fruit, the fruit shows? And so, you know, uh, you know, we are, you know, you, you got to have a tremendous group of people. And let me tell you one thing I am blessed is I am blessed with a mighty group of men and women that are behind one vision. Can you say amen? And many of them, I would say 99% of them, nobody would have even given them a second look. And that's what we build a $60 million company with. So what can God do with you? Whenever you put your eyes where his eyes are on. You know, it's not always the, the shiny thing. You know, if you want to get diamonds, you got to get in the dirt. Yeah. You know, you got to get in the dirt with people. You got to get people out of where they're at. And that's what we've done. That's why our business became such of a powerful ministry because the people that came and worked with, with us, we began to raise them up as a man and woman of God while they did business. And that's why our core and what we're building is very strong. And so, you know, and then we teach them not, not only, you, you know, one of the things about business and, and one of the things that, 
that I love about the wisdom that we've received is we don't make people followers of us. We, made him fo we make them followers of Jesus. Amen. Come on. Can you say amen? And so, you know, at, at best, we're there to direct them in the right direction, but we're never going to, you know, replace the relationship with the Lord and the Holy Ghost, you know. But you do have principles, and, and as long as people are working with you, our job is to keep people accountable to what the Word of God says. You know, and, 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 and that's how you're going to have ultimate unity because, you know, you teach people the principles and they're going to make the right decisions. We don't make decisions because we're getting paid some more somewhere else, but because God has called us to build over here. And that's how you keep everybody focused, not focus on money, but focus on the purpose. You know, and so and so that's why we begin to build and build and build and build. And so, you know, God's been so faithful. He's been so good. And, um, you know, now, you know, we are really, you know, expanding and, you know, our 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 principles so we can we can put them in a platform so people can connect and they can get the right legal advice. They can get the advertising advice, the sales advice, the building team advice. How can you build if you don't have a team? How could you build if you don't raise up the right people? How do you do that? You know, and so we we put all of that there so it is available for everybody to do. And, uh, and more, more, more than anything, we're building that university so for everybody that is from the world that we are hiring and we're recruiting, right? Because whenever we hire and we recruit people, they got to come into a culture. And so, you know, we put them to this university. They receive a, um, you know, they're going to receive a certificate that they are now certified to be able to work with solar, to work with home automation, to work with roofing, to work with air, whatever the case might be. But in them, we teach them the principles. And so now we have a lot of people that are coming. that are coming straight for the world. They're just coming for a job. But that's our way to give them a, uh, a soft introduction into what God's going to do in their life. You know, and so that becomes a, a very important tool. And then, and then the churches that are not river, that, you know, they really don't have any guidance on that. We're able to have a system to where people can plug in and say, man, I have something to follow. Because sometimes I go to other churches and do kingdom business. And I'm like, now what do I do with these people? I leave like a bunch of orphans. You know, they're like, I heard this amazing thing. Now what do I do? What do, I do? You know? And so God's given us wisdom to do that. And I believe that in Jesus' name, we have, we're going to have a 10x year this year, 10 times what we did last year. Come on, can you say amen? And I believe we're going we're gonna to sell our, our, our first million-dollar check and then shortly after a second one. Come on, can you say amen? 